What's up everybody? Welcome to this very special video that I seriously could not be more excited about. And that is the video where I tell you that I just bought a van. And over the course of the next few months, I will be building it out into a little home on wheels and I'll be documenting that entire process. I'm still gonna be putting out FPV content, gear review content, and all the normal stuff that I usually put out. Um, but on top of that, I'm gonna have this side series, which is just the build out process for the van. So yeah, I'll be documenting pretty much the entire process all the way from purchasing a van, why I went with the van that I did, um, all the fabrication, installing seats, installing cabinets, electrical, solar panels, everything. All the way up to getting out on the road. So I've personally wanted a van for such a long time. I can't even remember how long that I've wanted a van, but always in the back of my head, I just remember thinking like it would be the coolest thing in the world to just have this mobile office slash house that you can literally take wherever you want. Over the past few years, I've done a few trips and worked with a few different companies that did vans. And so I've spent a decent amount of time in camper vans. And for me, it is like the absolute best type of travel. You can literally go wherever you want. You can stop wherever you want. If you build it out right, it's totally comfortable and feels like a home and it gives you access to pretty much anywhere that you want to go. Over the past few years, I've been saving and saving and saving and I figure with everything that's going on right now, it's the perfect time to buy one and build it out. Luckily for me, being freelance, I can pretty much pick wherever I want to be based. As long as it's a cool location, as long as I can shoot content there, I can kind of just go where I want. And how things have been going recently, everyone keeps emailing me. And how the way, anyways, back to the video. And how the way of the world is going nowadays, I'm really not sure how international travel is going to be for the next eight to 12 months. It might clear up, it might not. So I really just want something that gives me access to the US. And there's so many cool places to explore in the US that I really haven't explored the past few years just because I've been so focused on international travel. Even after the whole quarantine thing is up and the world's sort of back to normal, it's the perfect mobile workstation. So if I have jobs in LA, I can drive out to LA, park it in my friend's driveway and just kind of live there for the month. Seriously, anywhere you wanna go, you can just park your van there and that becomes your doorstep. Last year around this time, I was doing a van trip from Colorado all the way out to Vancouver and me and my friend Michaela were in downtown San Francisco and we wanted to go out and get drinks. So we, we literally just parked our van in a parking lot in downtown San Francisco, went out to get drinks, and then we just walked back home and that was our base camp for the night. We didn't have to drive or anything. We just parked our house right outside the bar. Or for me, I am getting super into skydiving as of late. And with this, if me and a friend wanna just park at the drop zone for a week and just get jumps after jumps after jumps after jumps, we don't have to pay for a hotel. We don't have to pay for use of a kitchen or anything. Our whole setup is just there and we can just live at the drop zone and live comfortably. Or if I need to fly off to some foreign country, I can just park the van, get on the plane, and I'm not paying rent, I'm not really paying for anything. So it's just a very minimalistic way to live. So I'm gonna be building the van out like as if it was a home. I'm gonna be spending a ton of time in it over the course of the next year or so, I'm sure. So I really wanna do it right and make it feel like a homey place. So why did I decide to build it out myself? And one of the main reasons for that is converted vans like the one that I'm gonna be doing usually run between like $40,000 and $50,000. And right now I just don't wanna spend that kind of money on a van. And on top of that, I really enjoy building things. My dad was a contractor growing up, so I was always helping him build houses, do framing, do all of that type of work. And it's really fun just creating something with your hands. And when I build it out myself, I can make pretty much any decision that I want on a whim. If I wanna switch this up, if I wanna switch this up, I can just do it myself. And then on top of that, I'll know exactly how every single part of the van works. So if something breaks or anything like that, I know how to fix it and I won't be put in any situations where I just don't know what's going on or need to rely on anyone else to fix it. And being at home for the quarantine right now, I have a bunch of helpers, whether they know it or not. And there's just something like so satisfying about building something and creating something, especially when you're going to live in it. With that said, there's a ton of stuff that I have no idea how to do. The electric 
particularly terrifies me. I have no idea how to do it. I've been reading articles online like crazy, um, but it's still really intimidating for me. The plumbing, I'm pretty intimidated about. Installing the propane, like there's just so many different things that I don't know how to do and is really intimidating. But uh, I'm really looking forward to actually learning those things. Now, there are a ton of van build videos out there, but for some reason, a lot of them neglect the first step, which is actually buying the van. So here's some footage of us going up and checking out the van for the first time. All right, so this is the first look at the van. Um, this is basically the perfect van, except it doesn't have the back windows back here. But, uh, Watch a few YouTube videos and it looks like you can just like kind of cut them out and install them. Doesn't feel like home quite yet, but <laughs> might get there. So we're just test driving. But it's snowing. Boom. Boom. After we checked it out that day, I decided that this is definitely gonna be the van for me. Um, so the next day we went up and actually bought it. So I'm gonna quickly go over the reasons why I chose the van that I did and a couple of the other options that are out there. The van that I got is a 2016 Ram 2500 cargo van. And it's pretty much the exact model that I wanted to find. And there are a ton of options out there as far as picking an actual van. There's bigger vans, there's smaller vans, people convert school buses, there's just a million different ways you can go. For me, I definitely wanted the sprinter van style. Um, for me, one of my main requirements is that I need to be able to stand up. Um, other than that, I wanted something that wasn't too big and so it could still be maneuverable and you wouldn't have to like park it in any special places. But I also wanted it big enough that I could live in it long term. With Sprinters, you have a few options. So you can either do a Mercedes Sprinter, a Ford Transit Sprinter, or the ProMaster. The reason I went with the ProMaster is, for one, is you can put a bed sideways in it. So it's a little bit wider than the Sprinters. So you can sleep horizontally in the back, which gives you a bunch more room to play with in the front for like hangout space, living space, and all that. Two, as opposed to the Mercedes, really anyone can work on a Ram ProMaster. Mercedes need Mercedes mechanics usually to work on them. And when I'm in some remote location and I just like can't find a Mercedes dealership and my van breaks down, I just want something that anyone can really fix. And number three, like I talked about earlier, it's what I'm used to. Like I said a couple times over the past couple years, I've done van trips with different companies and they've all been Ram ProMasters and I've had a great experience with all of them. With the ProMasters, you can get a 136 or a 159, which is basically just the length of the car. And I did a 159 just to have that extra living space. Anyways, I cannot be more excited for this build. Uh, my friend Nicole is gonna be helping out with a bunch of it, um, doing a lot of the interior stuff and everything. And there's literally nothing else to do in quarantine. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of the perfect thing to do. And it's something I've just wanted to do for such a long time. It is actually really crazy looking in the driveway and just seeing that thing sitting out there. This is actually the first car that I've owned in four years. So it's pretty cool just like having keys. Having these is weird for me. Anyways, I'm gonna finish this video off with the first step of the van conversion, which is just cleaning out the back of it. After that, the next step is insulation and then there's something else and something else and something else and something else and there's a million steps to building the van um, but I could not be more pumped so I'll leave you with that and I'll see you in the next video